hello my name is Andy Salar and I am the fiber artist behind my Ryan Jean and today I'm gonna to show you how to make this super cute sculpted piece with just fine sheetle and scissors and yarn and fabric and hoops and let's get to it okay so for this project we will need fabric this is linen our bunch needle, really good scissors. These are Kai, my most favorite brand. Um, a hoop. I have actually a stand, but you can just use um, a hoop. This is a no slip hoop, which is the best for bunch needle. We will need our text, but it needs to be mirrored because we're going to be working from the back. So the text will be on the front and it'll end up looking like this. I made my lines a little bit thicker because we will be sculpting, so this will be more fun. And then we need our yarn. I've decided that I'm going to do every letter a different color, so it's a little bit more fun. So let's get right to it. So in order to make sure that we have a really good area to punch in, you have, uh, you have to make sure that your fabric is stretched really well. So what I do is I secure it, and then I go around and pull as much as I can and then I tighten it and then I repeat the process until the fabric is tight like a drum. Now we can uh, cut this a bit more so it's not in our way. Okay, once that's done we're going to transfer uh, our text so normally we punch from the back with the hoop it's really comfortable to punch from the top because you have this open area and you don't have to go from the back however because we're going to be sculpting I am going to transfer my text from the back and then um, I will have a free area for sculpting so all you have to do is put your frame face down and just making sure that is Pretty much in the center, we have an even space on the top and bottom. And then just take a Sharpie. It's okay if it's not perfect because uh, we're gonna punch. So it's, you know, if you have like a line that's not quite there, it's fine. You're gonna just punch wherever you want to punch. So because I'm going to be working in a stand, I can't be punching from the back. So I'm going to quickly flip this fabric um, and put it on the other side so I can put it on my stand and show you how to do it. Okay, here we are. It's flipped tight like a drum and ready to punch. So I'm going to grab my punch needle and you can choose a setting that you like. I'm going to go to probably the second tallest. Uh, with this, your loop will be halfway and that's how we can always figure out how long your loops are going to be with your punch needle. So I'm going to thread it by inserting the threader in the little opening and then continuing up the needle. And let's see, which color should we start with? Let's do this golden, golden baby. And just pull until it comes out on the other side. So the way we punch is you insert your needle all the way, pull that end to the other side. And you can pull a little bit here so that the other side has just about an inch there. And now we're going to take our needle out, but still keep the tip on the surface of the fabric and then move it about two, three holes and then punch all the way down. You want to make sure your yarn is not caught on something so it can flow through easily. And um, you want to always push it all the way down and then when you pull it up you don't want to do this because you saw the loop came out and then you can have a lot of yarn uh, here the goal is to have all the loops on the other side so 
If this happens, you can quickly pull on your yarn and just continue punching. And this is what we're going to do. Just go across the whole word like this. All the way in, pulling out. I'm going to show you a bit of a different view. Now, um, for sculpting, I like to do a little bit longer loops so we have a little bit more uh, yarn to work with. You can see the loops are showing up there. You can also punch a little bit closer than every three holes so you have a, a lot of material to work with. However, this yarn is pretty chunky already so you don't really need to uh, you know, go too close. You will have quite a bit of fiber to work with. So. I'm going to, how far am I going to go? Let's see. I'm going to go to E. And as I'm going to change the direction here, I'm going to turn my needle so that the big opening in the front is always facing the direction of my punching. Okay. You can also twist your canvas so that you can punch you know, from left to right, like I'm, I like to do, or you can do top to bottom or the other way around. So it's really up to you. Um, just kind of play with it and see what feels uh, best for you. And I'm just going to continue with this until I fill in the whole letter. Okay, so this is probably never happened to me, but the amount of yarn that I grabbed was actually perfect for this letter. So on the other side, we have like a, a big chunky something that's happening. Uh, now, normally I would sculpt uh, after each shape I did, but because this is a word and I wanted to have a continuous flow, I'm going to continue and punch the whole letter first, uh, sorry, the whole word first, and then we're going to go and sculpt. Okay, so now I actually have a chance to show you how to <laughs> snip your yarn if you're done uh, with one section. So you simply snip right here, leave a little bit of end sticking out and a little bit coming out of the needle, especially if you want to continue with this color. In, in this case, we won't, but just so you know. And then you pull out your needle and you're going to have this end here. That's all you need to do. So I'm just going to continue punching the rest of the word. I almost said letter again. <laughs> and I'll see you then. So as you can see, I've used bulky yarn throughout this. However, different brands have different versions of bulky. So let's compare the thickest and the thinnest. These are both considered bulky, but you see there's quite a bit of difference between them. So when you're punching... Um, you know, just make sure that if you have a thinner yarn like this, you know, you're going to have more rows going versus this one. I only did three rows with this one. I did two for six rows. So just want to make sure that the space is filled in uh, when you're just punching. You don't want to over punch, but in this case, uh, you can and should. Uh, for the O, I didn't do the, the little um, space, open space here for, you know, for this part because... It's just too small when we're going to carve. So we're just going to leave it like it is. And I just punched over the whole thing, which is fine. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to flip it again so that um, I can actually show you and have the punched part on top and we can start carving. Okay, here's our fuzzy hello. Look how cute. Not quite there yet, but we're going to get there. So you want to take your super awesome scissors and... Um, you want to, before you start um, cutting, uh, well, we can trim these ends here. What you do is basically just hold the scissors um, flat on surface and then you snip. That way the ends are going to be the same length as the rest of the loops. You can do that. And then one more. Uh, the O will be a little bit more complicated, uh, but don't worry we are going to get there. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over the shape of the letter. 
Um, and what I do normally, I put my scissors right next to the loops right here and just do a trim based on the shape. You can move the loops around just to kind of see where they end. You don't want to snip too close because then you're going to have really close, uh, sorry, short um, snips there and the yarn might come out. So I'm just going to go around. Quick clean up. Okay. We don't want to snip here, right? Because we want to have that continuous, um, just the flow of the letters. So now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to uh, go to the side again, but we're going to tilt our scissors a little bit more, just about 45 degrees, and do the same thing. And again, you just want to kind of check where stuff starts, where it ends. If you have any misbehaving ones, you want to trim those too. How far can we go here? Just about right there. I always work um, with a small uh, vacuum next to me and this can get pretty dusty so feel free to wear a face mask you don't want to be breathing all this in you can have air purifier turned on as well so okay now we're gonna do the center part right here so that we have that opening going so i'm gonna tilt my scissors and i'm just straight up gonna do the 45 degree be careful with the tips of these scissors uh, to not cut the fabric that's underneath there especially when you're doing cut like this I've done it before it's not fun let me tell you okay look how cute oh my goodness I'm actually liking how when you cut yarn it looks darker and um, the loops will look a little bit lighter so I'm actually liking the sort of a highlight that it has so I'm gonna leave this for now I'm gonna go grab my vacuum and I'm gonna give it a nice clean so you guys can actually see the shape much better Okay, I have cut um, a couple more letters now so we can see it taking shape. I've used the same technique as on O um, and I'm really liking the shape that the L's are taking um, and then the highlight I'm creating in the center with those loops. I'm now I'm working on this L. And you just really wanna make sure that when you go um, next to uh, another letter you kind of want to pull the loops apart and get the scissors really in between and cut to make sure that you won't cut the other colors. We will cut this anyway, but just, you know. And if you're not really sure, you can always flip it and see, okay, I don't have a lot of space here, right? And there needs to be a gap here, but this is connected. So this is connected. The gap is right here. And then not that much space here. I'm just going to cut down here. And how far do I go? Where does the curve end? How much of a curve, <clears throat> excuse me, do I want to have between the two L's? You are the artist. You can decide. 
as you're snipping, your tendency is, you know, to go in one direction. So what's actually helpful is to cut in a different direction, in the opposite direction. So I turn and then sort of expose more with my finger, with your scissors, and then go in another direction. Okay, constantly rearranging, constantly finding some that are, you know, just sticking out. You want to perfect the shape. So this can take as long as you want, but just don't, you know, spend 10 hours on it. <laughs> Unless you want to, but you don't have to. Okay, this is pretty good. We're going to get to E. This is the thickest yarn. So let's see. We're going to start. I'm going to start here in that empty, not empty, in that uh, space here. And just carefully. And again, getting the scissors in between the letters. So you really know where the shape is starting, where the loops are starting right here just you know get that finger in now this is going to be the continuous one so i'm going to stop right there i'm not going to cut this section and i'm going to continue down here i hope all this turning the canvas is not making you sick <laughs> Initial one's done here. I did it here, and I'm going to continue in that open space here. And then now we're going to do this opening right there. You can also hold the fabric from the bottom a little bit to and push it up to expose the edges a little bit better. So just continue snip, snip, snip um, a little at a time. Don't try to sculpt it all on your first try. Really helps to vacuum and really uh, see the shape better before you cut in again. If you don't have a small vacuum, a big one will do. Or you can just simply hit the fabric like this continuously and have it tilted and then the yarn will fall down. It'll just get dusty around you a lot. So highly recommend a vacuum. This is the line here, so I don't wanna cut this. This is the line here. Okay, let's vacuum. All right, so now get a bit more of a cleaner look. really get on those sides really get in there better you're just gonna have like fuzzy um fuzzy everywhere uh, but you can always rearrange with your hands to get the yarn where you want it to be because once you vacuum you know it's just gonna suck it all in upward direction look i think i'm gonna snip a bit more the loops here to really get that definition yeah now we're talking perfect yes see this is so much better now if you have any mixed yarn you know, like in between the letters that's okay it just gives it more of a, a blended look you know so that's fine i think i might want to actually get more in here Yeah. Okay. H, are you ready for us? So we have this, this here. It's 
sort of curving that way. We need a space down here and here. So I'm going to start around. Okay, how does this connect here? Okay, you can always just put your scissors like next to the line and it'll sort of, the loops will guide the scissors and that's how you'll know. I really want to snip this one, but I shouldn't because I want that highlight there, so I won't for now. <laughs> okay, now this is a pretty tight space here. I can tell I want to cut a bit more here really sort of define that O a little bit better Little snips here, a little side view, just so you can see how how tall the loops are. And now we're gonna work on H a little bit more. I got distracted with that O. So those little curves are a little bit more complicated, but don't be afraid you can do this just you know it's fine don't don't worry i mean come on we're cutting yarn it's you know just have fun little strays now going in the opposite direction I was cutting before I hope just kidding I am <laughs> And if you want, feel free to cut the tops if you all just want if you want it all to just be cut pile. I'm just really liking this highlighting effect that this is doing. So I'm gonna I'm gonna leave some. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut a little more. Yes. Just to really see that. darker and have it pop a little bit more okay. and you don't necessarily have to cut all the ones that are sticking out you can just kind of push them in like this you know so again up to you once they're they have a pretty good cut going. You can do the shape with the edge blade. It's very helpful for that. Just again, make sure you don't cut the fabric. Here we are. It's so cute. It's chunky. It's got texture. It's got color. And just put this in your hallway and just be like, hello. Oh, see, see, see what I told you? One more. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. I promise. Maybe, maybe I'm done. <laughs> okay, so what you can do is you can put this um, in a frame when you're done. Just make sure if you want, you know, a rectangle that uh, or whatever that it actually fits. The fabric is not cut in too much. And you can put it in a wooden hoop. 
uh, whatever you want and you can just hang it on your wall and look how cute. Okay, so now that we are done, we need to make it even more cuter by displaying it properly. So I'm going to take this out of my no slip hoop, which you can reuse for many more projects to come. This is the strongest hoop on the market and the only one I recommend for uh, punch needle. Um, then I'm going to grab just a regular uh, embroidery hoop. And then this cutie pie, which is like a display box that you can hang like this. So I'm going to put this away for a second. And we're going to put this in this hoop. Okay, I'm going to tighten this more so it doesn't keep slipping. So what we're going to do, you need Elmer's glue. All right. So what you need to do now is put glue along this inner rim. Doesn't have to be perfect. As long as it's there, that's all you need. Now I'm going to grab these magic clips and I'm going to fold the fabric over the edge and you can push the outer ring so it, the edge meets the inner and you're just going to put a clip on there. So do this all around. Once this is done, you're going to leave it for, I would give it a good, good four hours. I usually leave mine overnight, but you know, I think four hours will do. Even that might be too much, honestly, because Elmer's glow dries pretty quickly. So, All right, home stretch. Oh, I've got some yarn here that flew over from my tufting project. <laughs> Okay, we're going to take all of these off. Take this off. And cut the fabric. About this much, just be careful not to cut into your work okay now we take our display box this is the top here so we want to make sure that this is centered okay and all you need to do is put some hot glue on four points on the hoop and then glue it to this that's it you're done